right, welcome people of YouTube, uh, Nick the Punk Fish, with a new video series called Illustrator Wormholes. Uh, I wanted to start this channel to share some knowledge with my students, uh, but also figured I'd put it online, share with everyone else. Uh, so for this first tutorial, one of my favorites, uh, we're going to create life. That's right, we're going to create a double helix in Illustrator. Check it out. All right, in uh, this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make life. Uh, what I mean is I'm gonna show you how to draw a double helix in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, pretty simple stuff, uses uh, the pen tool and the pathfinder um, and a couple other tools, pretty simple, very straightforward. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing I like to do when I'm making uh, a lot of my tutorials is to go to the view menu and to show the grid and then go to the view menu and snap to grid. Uh, that way I can have a certain sense of control when I'm working, keep things nice and tidy and, and organized. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is change my fill color to none. This is a very important step. Uh, so let's make sure that we do this now. Otherwise you'll wind up with some errors later on. Now we're going to take the pen tool and uh, what you're going to do is starting at the intersection of two of the larger grid squares, you're going to click and drag to the right. Um, you can hold your shift key down to make sure that it's locked into uh, zero uh, degrees. Uh, you can also, because we have snap to grid turned on, you can also use the grid squares. So we're just going to drag this out four of the smaller grid squares uh, and that's going to create a curve point. Um, and you can see there's a little preview of what that curve is going to look like as it leaves that point. Now I'm going to come down uh, to the bottom of uh, these two grid squares and I'm going to click and drag to the right doing the same exact thing. Four little grid squares. I'm going to come back up to the upper right and click and drag to the right. Four little grid squares. And that's it. That's how we start. Uh, you can either click on the selection tool or you can do command shift A or control shift A if you're on a PC. And now you have a nice little sine curve. Uh, so now what we want to do is to make our double helix is we're going to take this and copy it. And the easiest way to do that is to just take your black arrow and then hold down your alt or option key and drag a copy over to the right. And sometimes if you're on snap to grid, uh, you have to just kind of select the line just at the right place in order to get it to move. And what I want to do is move this over two grid squares. So the end point is touching the other end point. And then we're going to uh, select this uh, new copy and drag a copy over to the right again. And now you have uh, three total copies of that curve. The next thing we want to do is we want to join it all together. Uh, you could use the join tool by uh, taking your white arrow and clicking or making a rectangle, rectangular selection over this intersection. And then we'll go to object, path, and join. Command or control J will do that for you as well. Or you can just select everything on here uh, and go to the object menu, path, command or control J. And now you should have one complete uh, side of the double helix. Uh, next thing we're going to do is open up our stroke panel. I'm just going to go over here to the properties panel uh, where stroke is evident. If you don't see that, you can always go up to the window menu and click on stroke. Uh, and for this, I'm going to change the stroke width to 20 points, nice and thick. All right. Uh, again, there should not be a fill on here. If there is a fill, now is the time to change it to none. Uh, we want to make a reflection of this, so what we're eventually going to be doing is weaving these two together. Um, so to do that, uh, you'll select this one strand, and then you'll double click on the reflect tool. And what we want to do is make sure horizontal is selected, and we're going to click on copy. So now you have the two strands, but we're not done yet. It looks cool, but we're not done yet. Uh, the next step is we're going to outline this uh, path uh, or the stroke. Right now, you can see this blue line represents the path. 
uh, and then you have a 20 point stroke that's placed on that. Um, but what we want to do in the end is make this thing kind of weave together. Um, so we're going to take these two strands and we're going to outline the stroke by going to the object menu, path, outline stroke. And now instead of it having a path with a stroke applied to it, it's now an illustrator shape uh, representing the thickness of that line. Uh, what we want to do now is change this back to the default colors of a white fill with a black stroke. You can either click here or you can type D on your keyboard to do the same thing. And now you can see that I have the two, uh, the two strands here. One is behind and one is in front and our goal is to make this appear as if it's woven together. So for that, we're going to use the Pathfinder tool. Um, you can open up the Pathfinder panel by going to the window menu and clicking on Pathfinder. And you're going to select both strands, click on the divide tool in the Pathfinder. And what that does is it divides up every overlapping shape on here and into its own shape. And what it also does is these voids inside of these loops also become uh, shapes as well, but they're invisible, they're unpainted. So we want to make sure that we clear those out. So let's go to the object menu, path and cleanup. And what we want to do is make sure unpainted objects is checked and we'll click on okay. All right, now this is all grouped together. So in order for this to function properly, uh, we're going to go to the object menu and ungroup it all. And now these are individual pieces. And now this is the magic trick here to make it all look like it's woven together. You're going to take the black arrow. We're going to start here. Click on this shape. Hold your shift key down. That'll allow you to, to add to your selection. And we'll select here. And we'll select the strand that follows. So one, two, and three. And then you're going to unite them together. And you're going to follow the same steps as you work your way down uh, this strand here. Click here, here, and here. Unite. Here, shift, here, here. Unite. Click, click, click. Unite. Upper intersection following strand. Unite. One, two, three. Unite. And you are done. So congratulations you have made life. All right, we'll see you in the next tutorial. Make sure to click on like and subscribe, and we'll see you at the next tutorial.